research self delhi metropolitan education i would take this opportunity to extend our warmest welcome to the speaker of the day mr ashok rathor additional director general of police rajasthan gracing uh, us with his presence is also uh, our uh, professor dr bhavish gupta head of the academics dme law school we have uh, dr isha jaswal head of research cell in this august virtual gathering and professor dr ravikant swami director dme um, thank you so much for attending this uh, workshop and uh, a very warm welcome to the participants as well before kick starting today's session i would uh, like to introduce our speaker and guest for the day mr ashok rathor he is the additional director general of police anti terrorism squad and special operations group an illustrious career in uh, law enforcement to boot uh, mr rathor was actually at the forefront in managing the investigation trial security and managing the public sentiments in uh, you know in the during the famous infamous actually uh, asaram babu trial he was also instrumental in passing uh, the ruling in favor of uh, the voice uh, spectrograph test um, he is also a scholar of criminology from cambridge and uh, it would be absolutely futile for me to include all the feats achieved by you sir in this workshop so please let me just extend our sincerest gratitude to you especially for being such a sport for to the changing dates of this workshop thank you sir for not losing your patience with us and being so very accommodative with this i uh, do not want to dilly dally with this workshop any more so i invite you sir to commence today's session thank you so much am i audible to you yes sir so it's completely all right that uh, we kept on changing the dates with respect to our own convenience and uh, i was uh, <laughs> also i was available and uh, now also it's all right for me so with respect to today's workshop so i would say at the outset that uh, 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 the fraudsters they are all the time they uh, they are trying their level best to somehow get into the uh, victims phone or somehow get into the victims uh, computer uh, by way of various means they keep uh, exercising or they try to be innovative in this regard and i would say that uh, based on our investigative uh, experience i can say that uh, they are very uh, very well versed with the uh, the data part uh, with respect to the victim and second uh, they are uh, to a large extent uh, they are tech savvy uh, as far as those technology uh, technological things are concerned uh, through which they can really uh, uh, get into the victim's uh, phone or the computer so uh, another, another sorry for interrupting you would you like us to uh, play your ppt as well or should we wait for that i think in a minute or two you can uh, sure, sir. okay sir but i would say that uh, they are uh, they are very confident and uh, they generate so much of uh, this uh, the victim uh, in fact uh, he or she gets hypnotized and uh, they start believing that the person concerned is a very genuine one and they uh, keep paying these people over a period of time we have got numerous uh, examples in which uh, uh, after knowing that <clears throat> they are somehow being duped then also people are paying money and for instance uh, uh, it is uh, there is no difference as far as the qualified or the educated people are concerned or the non educated ones also so if uh, even we are having cases in which the educated people they have been duped to a large extent now you can uh, i think uh, put it on okay just I 
hope it is visible. Yeah, it's visible. Okay. So can we go for the next one? So the first concern, uh, the first uh, slide is uh, related to uh, the swim uh, swap uh, modus operandi. So somehow they are trying that uh, uh, how to get uh, the sim changed of the person concerned. Uh, at times they would uh, portray themselves to be, uh, they'll go to the service provider and they'll be saying to the service provider that uh, somehow our sim has got uh, damaged or it has uh, stopped functioning. So we want to change the sim. And they would get the sim change of that person who is being targeted. So in this way, uh, there is some lag uh, in the sense that uh, they get a new SIM issued, but at the same time, the old SIM, it gets totally deactivated. And during this time itself, they would, uh, uh, they would, uh, they would enter into the details of uh, that person's bank accounts or uh, other emails and they would do the frauds over there. Next please. So he, here I have already, uh, in fact, uh, described that uh, they would call the mobile carrier and uh, somehow they get into the position of the new SIM. And for the, getting the new SIM issued, they give their proof of identity of that person who is being duped. So in this way, they get the control of uh, his phone and uh, all the messages, uh, etc. they keep, they start coming to uh, the person who is trying to dupe. Uh, his phone has got total control of victim's phone. But nowadays, uh, because as they, uh, they are doing all these things, so the law enforcement agencies and as well as the service providers, they are also uh, getting new things done. And uh, now there is a 24 hours delay in the sense that uh, you can get a new SIM issued, but your messages would be coming after 24 hours. So that is one thing uh, by which you can uh, check to a certain extent that uh, for the next 24 hours, he cannot make use of that. But certain, at times these uh, OTPs, they keep coming to emails also. So if he has got hold of uh, emails, then uh, he can definitely use all those things. Next please. So one way is to, uh, when you go from one service provider to the other, so you want to port your number and they, they portraying themselves to be the ori original person, they would say that uh, we want to get our numbers port. And at times they would uh, install on these, uh, this AnyDesk app is one, uh, one such app through which uh, they would install uh, such apps into the victim's phone and by that mechanism, so, uh, mechanism also they can get the control of uh, uh, victim's phone and all the messages which are coming to victim's phone, they would be coming to their phone also. And then they can definitely make use of all such uh, Paytm services or phone pay or whatever these UPI payments are there or they can get the tra uh, money transferred to their own accounts. So, uh, but they are, they are just trying, uh, they are just trying over here to get the control of victims phone. Next please. So as I mentioned earlier that uh, the real SIM card, the earlier one, it gets deactivated and starts, uh, uh, it doesn't uh, function anymore. And the person who has uh, taken the control, he keeps getting all the messages. Next please. Another feature is there nowadays, certain uh, phones, they are having the eSIM facility. And uh, before, I think, uh, before going for this uh, presentation also, yesterday itself, I got this eSIM installed in my phone also. And I just wanted to know how does it function. 
so again i would say that uh, uh, whether it's a physical sim or the e sim uh, the hacker is always trying to invade into your phone and trying to take control of your phone so whether uh, so for him e sim or the physical sim it doesn't matter but as far as e sims are concerned so there are certain spyware uh, like codes which can be sent to the targeted person and that way they can take control of their phone next please uh here uh in the next slide it would be coming that uh, how does it uh, function so uh, there is one attacker's uh, device and then uh, he sends a message to the victim's phone and through which uh, he gets control and he is able to surveil the phone of the uh, victim and that way he gets all those messages which in fact it's a parallel phone then whatever you are communicating everything he gets know uh here the mention of these two it's a, a little bit technical but uh, again on the idea is that uh, the hacker is trying to send some piece of software to victim's phone and trying to access the control of the victim next please so what what you can what you should be doing to be safe so it says that uh, never ever share information or phone or email or uh, although it's easier said but uh, seldom people are doing like that that uh, to keep a separate sim or phone for bank transactions but the third one is a quite important one because at times you need to stop uh, viewing the uh, certain links which are being sent uh, or while surfing also certain pop ups are there and uh, if you visit those sites then uh, your phone can get bugged to a large extent and in this regard i would say that uh, uh, android phones they are more susceptible to things like that it's very easy to uh, get bugged over the android phones and another thing here i would say that uh, if you are if you are a little bit cautious or uh, you are taking due care and caution then i don't think so you can be duped because they would be trying their level best to act, uh, they are having certain information and based on that they are trying to convince you that you can part with your uh, confidential information to them but at the same time you should be uh, saying that uh, whether the caller is he is he or she is really a genuine person or why would certain person would be asking and uh, in all these cases we have found that the individuals greed it is the main uh, uh, reason by which he or she is getting duped any person who is trying to tell you that uh, a certain amount of uh, rate of return or it would be available to you if you uh, part with your information or if you uh, whatever we are trying to suggest you you indulge into that so if you ha are going to have a second thought then i don't think so you would be duped ever next please this is the post incident action that uh, you need to inform your bank or get your cards blocked or frozen immediately uh, keep changing your passwords uh, reporting to the police station or the cyber crime unit so these are those things but uh, here i would say that uh, in all these cases we have found that uh, these criminals they are so smart that uh, if they are caught by police then they would say to go for this uh, compromise if you are duped for instance with uh, say 50 lakhs of rupees so they would immediately pay you those 50 lakhs they may pay you more also they would pay you say 75 lakhs also because for them it's more important to be outside 
and what happens that uh, in the course of law uh, the moment uh, these persons uh, they entered into uh, compromise uh, the court would say that uh, compromise has already been arrived because the complainant is not asking for any action and uh, the victim is ready to pay the money uh, the person is ready to pay the money uh, but uh, we are uh, we are trying in this regard to uh, make a presentation before the courts also that uh, courts should take into account that if these uh, fraudsters fraudsters they would come out then they would start duping others so it is not for that person uh, in itself but it is for so many others who can be targeted next please this is uh, another thing by which again uh, in the initial uh, uh, address also i would saying that they are somehow trying to take control of your phone or the computer so this man in the middle attack it says that uh, the uh, fraudster he is trying to be in between you uh, your phone or the computer and between the uh, so uh, through which you are getting this internet facility so a very good example would be the network uh, which is being provided in the hotels so you go to the hotel and you uh, log into that uh, hotels network so hotel people they can really access each and every information from your phone so it is always uh, uh nice or uh, it is uh, it's worth being careful that one should not be logging into the hotels uh network being provided free of cost so it says that uh, the person is uh, uh able to get the details of uh, of those details uh which are being used by the person through his phone or the computer so this person sitting in the hotel he comes to know each and every uh, communication or each and every for instance you are surfing some site then also he'll come to know that you are surfing this site so best is to uh, get get it encrypted so you can use vpn so that way you can definitely uh, and then your all this uh, surfing activity or the uh, interacting or the internet it gets encrypted and he will not come to know that uh, what are you doing over there certain these small business firms uh, they are also using this uh, their own servers so they are also of the same example as the hotel is so this uh, slide says that uh, how can you be a can you still be a victim of uh, mitm so yes because there are certain uh, um, tools or softwares which can be uh, which can be uh, somehow manipulated uh, and uh, sent to your phone or the computer and that way they, they can in fact uh, sniff data or your passwords and then uh, they can exploit for the bin attack cap is one such tool next please so it's a little uh, technical again so uh, how one is you can uh, you should be defending against such uh, apps and uh, uh basically uh, wherever such uh, networks are there or such uh, facilities are being provided so encryption of your uh, messages or the mails it is very much required and uh, you need to devise certain tools or you get you need to get in touch with uh, uh, software professionals so that uh, you can really 
uh, make your phone or the computer safe. Next, please. So, what are they trying to do? So, they are trying to intercept your mails or your transaction or pending payments. In this regard, I would say that uh, we have got certain cases in which uh, uh, one exporter is there who is, uh, for instance, sitting in uh, in our country. He is exporting certain material to uh, some other country, and uh, now that country person has to make a payment to this guy over here in India. And when this uh, uh, payment is uh, being done, so it, this payment doesn't come to the person over here and it goes to somebody else. So he again raises that uh, invoice that uh, my payment has not reached and they would be saying that they have sent the payment. So in this regard, I would say that when they intercept the mails, so they just uh, change uh, certain words in the emails and it does look like that same email, but only one or two uh, letters are changed. So that way, this uh, payment, it doesn't go to intended place A, it goes to certain other place B, and that way the person gets duped. Next, please. So as I was saying that uh, you need to have encrypted mails, Another thing is to cross verify payment details. So I can tell one example in this regard that uh, when the email ID, it is being hacked and uh, this payment goes to some other bank. So normally what they are trying to do, the, these all these uh, payments they are going to certain foreign banks also and then it it is really difficult for enforcement agencies to get details from those banks and it's a quite a tedious process and at times uh, this uh, time limit is also uh, uh, very less beyond one year it's very difficult to get all these details there are so there, there have been so many instances when the person concerned reports about the crime a little late when he gets late so the proceedings uh, with respect to the investigation they are also delayed next please so this is another uh, uh, type of fraud which uh, in which uh, there would be a friend's request for the Facebook or the uh, LinkedIn or all these social media platforms. And they would try to uh, make such an offer and which uh, the victim, he or she thinks that it's a very lucrative uh, offer. And they do indulge into uh, uh, this trap. And once uh, they get into the trap, I've seen people paying money over a period of time. So say one year or one and a half years or two years, and they keep paying in this anticipation that they would get some money back. But I'm saying that we have not found any case in which they have given any money uh, to these people back because they keep through one, uh, method or another, they keep extracting more and more, more money. And I at times fail to understand that uh, how people can be so uh, so foolish. Because if I'm there, I would not uh, part a very small uh, amount of sum also. But I've seen one recently one case had come in which uh, there is an elderly couple. They came to my office and they. Uh, this guy had retired from some office. He was having some 1.65 crores of uh, money in his bank. This lady, uh, his wife, she was so shell-shocked and this guy, he didn't have an iota of any grief on his face despite losing 1.65 crores. And the, he has been paying over a period of time. 
and he has not shared this information with any person over uh, there back home. So I'm really, uh, I'm really at loss that how can people be so uh, doing such a thing. Today only I was reading in some Guardian Weekly that uh, a person, he's a doctor, and he was duped. Uh, Break it off. I think seventy lakhs. Captain over the max facility. CEO Piscatello is your man up here. Where is he? I don't know. Still. Yeah. So this guy, this doctor, he was duped for seventy lakhs of rupees or so, and why? That uh, somebody he told him that uh, they'll give him on that uh, Aladdin's chirag, or he believed him, and he parted with almost seventy lakhs of rupees. So people are like that, and he was a doctor, by the way. So or any such offer. They try to build up that confidence, and for that they would go and visit the victim also. But uh, once they get money, after that they cannot be traced back. Next, please. So this is again just to gain the confidence of the person. They would be uh, going to them or meeting them or asking them to verify the sample quality, etc. So this is one thing, uh, don't enter into any business deal without any verification or to make an, any advance payments. But uh, here again, the great part is so much that people without verifying things, uh, some cases were here uh, in which they exported certain food items also to that extent and uh, to certain Southeast Asian countries. And they didn't, uh, the uh, consignment was sent, but they never got their payments back. And when we asked that, uh, you didn't ask for any advance. So they were just saying that uh, we have been doing such businesses. So they, they just wanted to do it. And they just thought that they would be getting back some money. Next, please. This is another way in which uh, he would uh, portray himself to be a customs officer and uh, after befriending some person over the, some social media platform and after gaining confidence, he would be saying that I'm coming to travel to India and uh, once he or she reaches over there, then they, he would be saying that I need to pay over uh, this arrival so much of money. Can you please send me so much of money? And people do pay. Another case in which, uh, uh, which I read it in Reader's Digest, and it was a true story, it says, in which this lady, she paid uh, to one Nigerian close to three lakh ten thousand dollars over a period of, I think, two years. And she kept on paying. And she was having this uh, uh, confidence that this guy would come someday and uh, he would uh, marry her. But he never came over there and later on he told her that he's trying to uh, he has been duping her and after that also she paid nearly 20 or 30 thousand of dollars next please <clears throat> so this is what i was saying that uh, they would be saying that uh, we have come over here and we are having some problem over here so why didn't you pay with respect to the excess baggage or the, the next so would you be a friend of foreigner on facebook so i don't think so that uh, normally people uh, do certain things like that but still uh, people have got money and they keep doing certain things like that Recently, I saw one case over here. In this uh, case, also a lady is here in Jaipur, and she got uh, befriended with one guy over the this Facebook on, only, and she parted with I think ten lakhs of rupees or something like that. 
Next, please. So this is another thing in which uh, they would uh, promise some policy or gift or a loan or a lottery. And I also keep getting certain emails like that. Uh, and best is not to uh, not to click on all these links. Once any email which you think that it is not uh, from a verified sender, so you should not be clicking on any of the link over there. So this is one way by which they try to install some malware in your uh, phone or the computer and to take the control over there. So this is what they are, they keep uh, doing these innovations. In fact, uh, they would not uh, limit themselves to one way of doing things because that way uh, their, this trap would be so visible. So they keep changing their tactics. Next please. QR code scan and scan in which uh, I would say that uh, uh, no site would say that uh, or no payment facility is saying that uh, to get some money you need to scan the QR code. So when you have to pay something then you need to uh, do the scan. But if somebody says that if you scan this QR code then you'll get some money. So that's a fraud. So this is what it is. Next please. To know your customer fraud. So again, this has been going on for a long time. And uh, I have also been getting certain calls like that in which he would be saying that your credit card has got blocked or. So I thought straight away would say that, uh, okay, I'll get it done to my bank only. So one should not uh, give any information to anyone over the phone and no bank because repeatedly they are the banks are also saying that they are not asking for any such details so one should not be given next please so it says that it takes two to commit a theft so uh, yes so, uh, over a period of time we are devising new systems or new technologies are coming but at the same time, they are also being uh, uh, innovative and uh, with a lot of this confidence, they are doing all these things. But as it has been said that most of the fraud gets committed out of the greed of the complaint. So the moment you see something like that, that this rate of return is not at all possible, then you should not be giving any money over there. Next please. This is one slide uh, which uh, when I was uh, police commissioner at Jodhpur, so in 2015, we had uh, publicized and uh, we had put everywhere in all the police stations and in which this last line is uh, uh, the crux lies there that, one sec. Saar yehi hai ki praloban ke evaj mein aap sab dhan rashi lene ki scheme dhokha sabit ho sakti hai. So as I was saying that uh, if someone is trying to, uh, if someone is saying to you that uh, if you pay this much of money, then you'll get this much of money based on a higher rate of return. So I think that's a, that's a something uh, which I would not go for that. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for the great session. Um, we have a couple of questions uh, yeah. for the question and answer round. And uh, to every participant, the chat box is now open for the questions and queries you would like to post. Uh, I'll be taking up all the questions from the audience, sir, and then relaying them to you. Um, so some of the questions that have come up before us are, and in fact, this is a very interesting question that I would also like to ask you, sir, because in these times, especially in the post in the COVID era, you know, everything has shifted to technology. 
so people who are not very technologically sound and you know are very hands on technology for instance like one of my older professors these remote sharing apps uh, for example you have also named the app any desk app they yeah. have actually proved to be a quite you know very effective for them to manage their affairs so they have like installed these any desk app in their laptops and then some research assistant is you know uh, trying to access their uh, computer from some other place and they can they are able to take their online classes through them and not just that sir but you know even in these uh, customer care service centers like dell acer they are also now promoting the use of such uh, remote sharing apps that they would just access your dell laptop and then if there is any problem with the system they can sitting anywhere they can just correct your system and be done with it so i would like to ask and this is the student is also asking this question that should we consider these apps as ethical or should there be some sort of you know management which should govern these apps in any manner i would say that uh, if uh, it's it's coming from the genuine source for instance the dell or the the authorized person only if it is coming from that then you can uh, think about all these but otherwise i would not uh, recommend that it should be considered because they, what they are trying to do uh, at times when we believe all these people that uh, uh, these uh, authorized dealers or the authorized companies also at times they part with this uh, data which has been collected from us our executive working over there once he leaves that uh, company he goes and he sells all the data to these fraud fraud uh, people who are busy with the uh, duping people so we have got certain cases in which uh, uh, people working in such companies they have stolen that data and after stealing that data they have sold it in the market it's uh, the running rate is say around 1000 rupees per page so it's a very delicate uh, situation that when to uh, part when to indulge into or uh, to go for such a site or when not to i would say that to the extent possible if you can do it through certain other means then you should not be doing that another question is from uh, a student uh, prabal tripathi he is from uh, alahabad university so he is asking that uh, apps which are of completely different nature like photo editors games and various other apps like true caller which ask for perm permission to access phone calls and everything are these apps also capable of doing frauds financial frauds if that is a possibility then can there be a method to avoid them i would say in this regard that uh, with respect to this android based phones and uh, the on the ios uh, platform phones so on android based phones uh, there are so many apps which have not been verified to that extent that uh, your phone would remain secure with respect uh, for instance this true caller again any uh, in fact any app which you are downloading it would straight away ask for certain things to get into your contacts list or to photos or to your all the information and if you don't accept that then it will not get installed also so you need to choose whether you would like to uh, uh, have that app on your phone true caller i would say that uh, so far we have not found any such case in which true caller has sold this data to someone or but this data is very much available over the you know or there with the true caller and if the data is hacked uh, of true caller then your data would also go to those people so the moment you uh, say i accept so you are giving access of your phone uh, or information lying in your phone to the person concerned 
Thank you, sir. So, uh, Shraddha Goyal is uh, actually providing a scenario, if you could just take a consideration to that. So, a person receives an email from a bank, from your bank, a person's own bank, telling us that there is some problem with our account. The email provides some sort of instructions and a link for us to log in that account to fix the problem. Should we like, confirm with the bank first that this link has actually been sent or not? Or should we just trust the messages that are coming from our authorized banks? Has it really happened with her? Uh, no, I would ask because banks normally do not do like that. Okay. Yeah. Right. Because uh, if uh, the, I've never seen such a case in which a bank would be asking you to okay. get into that okay. name person. Thank you, sir. Um, another question is coming uh, from a student which says that gift card frauds are also quite on the upsurge these days. So uh, do you think that these e-commerce giants like Amazon or Flipkart should have some sort of responsibility to protect their e-products from becoming a tool for cyber frauds? Can you explain it? Uh, because uh, I couldn't... Uh... Okay. okay, so sir, I think these are uh, e-cards that are coming up in uh, Amazon and Flipkart. So like e-gift cards, you buy the gift card, these gifts, gift cards are like for 5,000 rupees, 20,000 rupees. Mm -hmm. So you buy the gift card. Uh, am I audible to you, sir? Yeah. 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 So uh, you buy the gift card and then uh, you gift, like give that gift card to another person, transfer it to someone and then they can do the shopping on Amazon with that amount which you have gifted. Yeah. Right? So there have been various uh, incidents that have been reported where these gift cards were sold and uh, like they people got links from uh, email IDs saying that you know you have to buy this amount of gift, gift card and send it to this email ID. And surprisingly enough these uh, emails came from people whom they knew. So uh, and once these gift cards were bought you do not have anything, you know, there is no power remaining in your hand to get okay, the gift cards it. back. Yeah. What's happening over here that uh, again, the person, the person who is trying to do, mm -hmm. he has got control of, over uh, your, this, uh, uh, maybe most of the people, they keep doing it through their cell phones. So they must have got access into that. And based on that only, they are trying to direct the person to do like that. And ultimately, what they are trying to do that, that this money would straight away go to their, uh, their account. So thus, uh, if you are trying, uh, person A is trying to send gift card to B, so instead of going it to B, it goes to him. Okay. Um, another question that's been asked by uh, Ritrik Ratnapaki, and I think he's sharing his one of his problems with us. So he states that one of my friends is a victim of Olex fraud where he lost his 40,000 rupees for a purchase of a bike which, in which the fraudster kept on asking money. So when he went to the Pune IT cell, uh, they said that there are many Olex fraud cases where majority of fraudsters' uh, last locations are somewhere from the Rajasthan border. Um, so do you have any insights on this, sir? And can these fraudsters actually be traced? Yeah, I would say that uh, this uh, area belonging to Bharatpur and going up to say Mathura, this Palwal in Haryana and uh, belong to, belonging to certain community special. So these people are nowadays, earlier they used to do the roadside robberies or dacoities and nowadays they are into this OLX frauds. So if uh, he can uh, send this uh, complain to me, so I'll get it redressed in fact. And there are so many people over there uh, who are indulging into this OLX fraud that we came to know that uh, at one place, they got one ATM also installed in their own premises. They're in one of the houses, it is having an ATM also. So to that extent, they are, they are, they have become smart. And in fact, they have done it, uh, he's from Pune, but they have done it, uh, uh, their victims are there in Hyderabad and in uh, Bangalore also. 
because from there also police had come to this part of the country and they had caught hold of certain people. So, um, so we have a very um, serious question coming towards you and I mean all of us, especially the law scholars wonder this question all the time that are cyber laws actually effective in India and applicable specifically in reference to cases where the fraudster is actually situated outside the boundaries of India. So how do we actually, uh, are cyber laws actually in existence? Should we actually you know, repose our trust over them? In this regard, I would say that uh, there, there are various treaties between various countries. So based on their treaties, they uh, exchange information and they exchange uh, criminals also. But uh, there are certain mechanisms by which they are trying to hide their identity. VPN is such in which you are not able to know exact location from which the person is operating. And uh, certain uh, acts like that being committed uh, by people who are in, uh, residing on the foreign soil. So it's really difficult. It is not at all easy. Uh, uh, I would uh, say in this regard, or I would quote one example in which the Indians, they have duped US citizens. And so far the investigation is on, but I've come to know a fraud of uh, at least 20 crores I've come to know that this is the amount of fraud they have already committed. Uh, so it is, uh, it is not something that uh, people from other countries are doing from here also. They are doing, they are duping some other people and from other countries they are duping uh, our people. But uh, for this, uh, the mutual cooperation, uh, it is very much required and uh, there should not be any delay also while reporting certain cases. Because while we, uh, we are dealing this case, we are dealing at the complaint from the uh, US law enforcement agency. Okay, uh, so we have around 15, 20 questions. We won't be able to take all of them right now. I would uh, narrow down to four more questions then, and then we can have a <laughs> wrap because there are a lot of questions coming up towards us. Um, to all the participants, thank you so much for asking so many questions. The time is a little limited. Uh, you can email us at research cell at the uh, research cell at the rate dme.ac.in with your queries and maybe we can come up with your answers. Right now, I'll take four more questions and then uh, move on to the next part of the workshop. Um, so there is another question that is coming up towards you, sir, and that is uh, by Akshita Bharadwaj. Um, she says that uh, a few days back, she got some OTPs from Zomato, JustStyle and certain such apps, um, despite not installing them. So she had not installed the apps, but still she got the OTPs. So is there some chance of a fraud in this situation also? I don't think so over here because uh, she is not... Uh, uh, she has not uh, installed any app over there and she is getting some OTP. So it may be misdirected towards her phone, but uh, here I don't think so that uh, it can be made use of by any fraudster to dupe someone. It's a, another question that uh, we can take up right now is uh, um, I think you have uh, discussed it in your presentation as well, but if you could just revisit that again. Is it safe to use public Wi-Fi connections, such as at an airport, restaurant, or a hotel, to conduct business or to do online transaction of money? This has been asked by Palak Bajpay. I don't think so. One should be doing it. Or if one really wants to do then uh, one should have a, this uh, VPN. So that way you can just... Uh, and kept everything which is going from your phone or the computer to the server. So that way you can protect yourself. Okay. Um, another question that we have is... Yeah, I would say that anything which is coming as which we feel that it's free, I think we should stay away from that temptation. 
Okay, fine. Then we have uh, um, another question by Ranjan Singh. How far are we safe if we are not sharing any information to any person, considering the circumstance where everything is virtual or open somehow? Uh, is it possible to live in a world where we cannot share? Yeah, to a great extent, because uh, if uh, mostly or most of the time it is happening with respect to money, the person, uh, the uh, the fraudster is trying to uh, get into your bank account or somehow take out money from you and get into his bank account. So unless you part uh, that information with someone, you can really protect yourself. I don't think so. It is such a such a difficult thing also. A little amount of caution would protect anybody. Right, sir. Um, and the final um, question that I would like to put up against you is, uh, I have a little difficulty in reading this. Just a second, sir. Um, okay, this is a quite a personal question to you, sir. Uh, the student wants to ask Arjun Singh uh, that what is in life of an ATS officer and how can we become a part of it? For him to join this. Yes. Yeah. So ATS is uh, this anti-terrorist squad. So here we have got uh, this, uh, my designation. So ATS and SOG. So these two are completely different uh, fields of work. As far as anti-terrorist squad is concerned. So it is uh, to protect the state or the government and uh, the people or the officers who are manning this organization, so they belong to our state police service and the Indian police service. So the induction is through these services only. And uh, they one can really uh, help or assist certain, certain uh, organizations like this by way of becoming an expert on cyber things so that is one one field or through the these uh, services only these are the avenues through which uh, one can come right um so with that we come to the end of our query session um again i'm repeating to all the participants if you have any queries which we have not been able to answer sir has not been able to address them uh, you can please send us to research cell at the rate dme.ac.in it's uh, shared in the chat box as well um so uh, the final things that I would just like to conclude this entire session would be that uh, cyber frauds are something which is not affecting, uh, it's, it's uh, beyond classes and beyond literacy rate as well, because you cannot say that people who are not well versed with, uh, are, are not well educated, they can get duped, but cyber frauds are for everyone. Uh, even the most uh, intelligent and intellectual of our lot can just lose money at one click, at yeah. one click itself. So, uh, like this, this entire uh, realm of uh, offenses are so. I mean, we are quite scared of cyber frauds, yet we are so blind towards them at the same time. Uh, therefore, it makes us, it makes all these uh, specific crimes so, uh, to use a little morbid word, special in their nature. So thank you, sir, for uh, enlightening us uh, with your talk. Also, the question and answer round was quite interesting as well. Um, with this, uh, we come to the end of this uh, workshop and uh, it cannot be completed without uh, our director, sir's vote of thanks. So I would now invite uh, Professor Dr. Ravikant Swami to give his uh, final. Okay, uh, am I audible, Shambhavi? Yes, sir. Okay. so. Uh... It was a great afternoon or evening with uh, Rathod, sir. And uh, uh, yes, sir, uh, it's very right uh, that behind all these things, uh, one thing which is common is greed. Uh, so I would uh, like to ask the audience a philosophical question that what is the most costly thing on this earth 
or which are the things which are very costly i can tell you things which end up to be very costly are the things which are free so therefore uh, this this free is probably something which is a common thread between very many uh, these cyber crimes and cyber frauds uh, everyone i believe each one of us present here must have received so many emails uh, in our spam box or in our mailbox wherein uh, someone asking that oh i am in the last stage of my life and i want to give away my property so on and so forth uh, but obviously uh, people don't uh, means uh, uh, those who are wise don't reply but those who want to get that money then they have to suffer those frauds uh, as far as the cyber laws are concerned uh, well sir i must say uh, you are a police officer but i must say that uh, the cyber laws in india are in its infancy and uh, it it will take time a lot of time to uh, for those laws to develop and uh, for reaching the criminals yes means i can personally go to instances while uh, while i did file an, an fir but we couldn't reach anywhere so uh, yes i must say that whether it is investigation or it is cyber laws they are in its infancy and rightly so because uh, with digitization means digitization is not very old so therefore the laws are still to be developed uh, i would like to thank uh, rathor sir for this uh, very knowledgeable session and uh, sir uh, there is one test of a good session and that test is that uh, whenever we get good number of questions uh, it simply means that the session was absolutely good and the people could absorb it very well so the number of questions prove um, it's it's like the number of questions are like the sound of huge clap so it it proves that the session was very good and uh, i would also like to thank the research cell uh, dr isha the head of research cell uh, shambhavi shanu and akanksha for conducting this session and thanks thank to all you, the sir. participants for uh, coming up on a holiday thank you sir thank you i would uh, say two things in this regard what uh, you were trying to say about the infancy uh, that laws evolve over a period of time so never ever we can say that uh, we have reached up to the ultimate stage and after which we cannot uh, okay this is the end of it no it is not like that in second laws or uh, crimes first of all the crimes as such they are a reflection of the society so uh, there are so many things which are going on in the society for instance this covid situation this in itself has caused a complete uh, change or amendment in people's way of life so the same way uh, the crimes the nature of crimes they also keep changing and as the society grows so are the crimes are uh, taking a new pattern so based on that new pattern only uh, there would be effective laws as she mentioned uh, in the initial address when she was trying to read out about uh, my work so voice sample spectrography it was no law before 2nd of august 2019 but as the cases were coming up and uh, it was uh, pending before the honorable supreme court and finally it uh, has been uh, directed by the honorable supreme court that now onwards this voice spectrography test would be conducted and it would be admissible as an evidence so in the same manner laws evolve and they take shape as per the requirements of the day thank you indeed thank you thank you so much sir thank you the esteemed dignitaries that are present between us uh, for this virtual um, session um, in hopes of meeting each other outside these boxes soon enough uh, we come to an end to this uh, wonderful workshop um, uh, i want reminder to the participants uh, kindly fill in the attendance sheet as soon as possible the window is open only for 15 minutes and your e certificates are dependent upon the uh, attendance that we are going to take so thank you so much everyone thank you thank you thank you thank you so
Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, everyone. So participants, please may copy the link with you all and we'll exit the session in another two minutes. So we request you to copy this link and fill it within the time span of 15 minutes. In case you have filled the form, you all can exit and then we'll close the session in next couple of minutes.